Hi, Peter Boyles. Welcome one more time to The Shoot. I named it The Shoot because of, of course, professional wrestling. When they call something a work, that means they're working, but when they shoot, it's for real. And I love calling this The Shoot. With me on this, this edition is, I, I don't have words always to express my, my love and my respect for this man. His name is Lee Larson, and he came into Colorado to run KOA Radio back in the, um, in the salad days, as someone once said, when Alan Berg and myself and Gus Mercus and all these legendary uh, Bob Martin, Larry Zimmer, and all these guys were running this magnificent radio station, KOA. That had been owned by General Electric. The torch got passed, and this man comes from California. I, I never, I say to people, one of the finest men I've ever known in my life. And Lee Larson. So thank you, sir. It means a lot to have you here. Glad to be here. Oh, man. When you first came here, we talked many times about this over lunch. General Electric owned KOA. You were working for Golden West at the time? No, I was in Los Angeles uh, working for ABC Radio. Um, Golden West was long before that. Okay. Yeah. What were you doing when you were working for them out there in California? What I was a um, sales manager of an FM station they had in Los Angeles. Um, and uh, uh, a guy that I had worked with um, at ABC was now in charge of a company out of Dallas, Texas called Below Broadcasting. Mm -hmm. And uh, they were the ones that bought KOA from General Electric. And he had always tried to get me to move from Los Angeles when he ran a, a division of ABC. And he called me and said, um, okay, I got the radio station you've always wanted and uh, you're gonna have to move. And I said, well, let's talk. Mm -hmm. And so he told me about KOA and that is the kind of radio station I always wanted to run. I wasn't as interested in music as I was in the power of talk and news had and sports. Had you ever run a talker before? Uh, no, no, wow. no. I had, I had been a manager of a station up in San Francisco, but it was a music station. So this would have been my first. But that time frame, in, music in LA, that must have been something else. Well, it was big. The station I was with was called KLOS. Oh, yeah. And it was the big uh, yeah. you know, rock station in Los Angeles at that time. And we were co-housed with KABC, which was uh, a, a big oh, talk okay. station. Yeah. Uh, with a lot of big personalities and carried the LA Dodgers and uh, that's why uh, I had that kind of interest in that in that kind of radio and my uh, friend Marty knew that and so he figured he finally found a radio station he could get me to work for. Those stations are called Heritage or Legendary mm -hmm. and there's a handful of them in the country and KOA certainly was one of them. Right. Mm -hmm. So you came to town and these stories are great because you hit the city, and then the switch is on, below cells. Right. I. Um, it's an interesting story, you know, in that General Electric was getting out of the broadcast business, yeah. and they sold at that time everything that they had except Channel Four yeah. in Denver, yeah. which they which they kept partially because they could do a lot of production for General Electric. Yeah. Uh, they had a set up there to be able to do that. Belo decided at that time they were a big um, uh, television and newspaper company. They owned the Dallas Morning News. Uh, the Belo family, uh, in, uh, the greater family includes the Dealey family from yeah. Dealey Plaza in, uh, in Dallas. And so they're very well situated. And they were, as I say, big in television throughout Texas and, and newspapers. And they decided they were going to expand into radio and they hired the, this friend of mine from ABC to come down and run the, run the company. They, the first big acquisition they made was Denver, and he hired me. And before I got my family moved here, Belo uh, came across, across an opportunity <laughs> to buy some big television uh, group from back east called Corinthian TV. And they decided, um, oh, well, you know what? Uh, we're going to expand in television and not in radio. And then they turn around and, and put the radio, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, basically for sale. The, the, my, my boss, uh, Marty, got let go right away. Yeah. Um, he had some conflicts with him. So I wound up working for, it took Below probably two years before they sold us. Uh, so I was working without the guy that hired me and 
for a company I knew nothing about and uh, all that. Yeah, and, and everybody so it was, was, in, was in flux because you've always told the story. The first employee that you speak to is none other than Alan Berg. The famous Alan Berg. Yeah, I, yeah I'm, I'm sitting in a hotel. <laughs> I think it, I think it was the Hyatt Hotel downtown Denver, and I'm I'm here for several days. <laughs> waiting for the official word. And you'd gotten the news that the, the switch was on. Well, yeah. it, it hadn't happened. They hadn't signed all the documents okay. yet. Yeah. So I was supposed to be waiting there and then they would call me and say, okay, the deal's done. Go over to the station and, you know, meet all the people and all that. So I'm sitting in my room and the phone rings and it's uh, <laughs> this hyper gravelly voice, Alan Berg, and he's talking a mile a minute and he's got to talk to me, he's got to see me, he's got to meet me, uh, something or other, something or other, things are crazy and it's it's critical and I'm like... You well, had to know him too. That, that, well, yeah, and I yeah, didn't yeah. know him, but I'm, yeah. I'm getting all yeah. this and I just sort of said, well, I, I'm nobody knows I'm here, <laughs> and I'm not supposed to talk to anybody. Yeah. He says, oh, you got you got you to meet me, you got to meet me, and so I wound up meeting him at, uh, was it called the... Colorado, Colorado Cafe, yes. or and, well, yeah, that was one of his favorites. Yeah. Okay, yeah. some some place right yeah. there yeah. in the main part of Denver, yeah. and uh, and he <laughs> had this lengthy uh, uh, issue where he had recently been moved from daytime yeah. to nighttime, yeah. and he didn't like it, and it was unfair, and he expected me to put him back yeah. on daytime immediately. Uh, so that was my introduction to Alan, yeah. What had happened is, was prior to your arrival, uh -huh. and for some, whatever reasons, shrink shows went on radio. Right, yeah, they were big. So they had mm -hmm. Andrea Van Steenhouse. Right. Mm -hmm. So Jim Hawthorne, the late right. Jim Hawthorne, moves AB tonight, uh, to tonight's, and puts Andrea on as the afternoon exactly. shrink show. Right. And uh, mm -hmm. then, of course, they had Hamblin and... What a lineup of stars that must have been for you. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes, that. yes yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so that's what Alan wanted was yeah. me to kick Andrea off the air and put him back in his slot and yeah. all of that. So my, uh, as fate would have it, we found a way to get him back on the uh, daytime. Ouch. <laughs> <laughs> so the Berg story with GE, and we've talked about it. Um, Berg had insulted somebody, hard to believe. Yeah, I can't and, imagine and that. And they, they came after him and... Um, they, wanted, they needed to suspend him for a couple of days. And Joel Day, who I would say the after you comes Joel Day. I mean, yeah. Joel Day was amazing to work for. And Joel, I get done with the show at noon. Joel, and somebody said, Joel wants to see you. And I thought, oh boy, it's never good. Mm -hmm. And I go in and he says, sit down. He said, I got to suspend Alan. I, 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 I know most of the story. So he said, but I want you to sit in the office with me when I tell him. I said, <laughs> okay. And so I'm sitting, he comes around the corner into that old office that you obviously right. was yours, and he's carrying a dog. And it was a dog he was given to the days uh, as, a, as, a, as a gift. And they actually named the dog Bergie. Oh, okay. And so he said, hey, boss, yeah, I'll give you a dog. Here's you know, a dog. I said, well, Alan, <laughs> you got to take a couple of days off. So he gets into one of his rages. And so he's, come on. So we end up someplace in the building. And they had a, a flow chart of what General Electric owned. Oh, uh huh. And it was, you know, big diesel engines. <laughs> you know, so there was, and it gets railroad down. Railroad cars, <laughs> yeah. Plus, yeah. it gets down to it says um, household appliances, and then a line that says broadcast properties. <laughs> <laughs> See this? And I what? He said, he said, they treat us like toaster ovens. <laughs> and then you come to town. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Yeah, that was interesting. What a time. Yeah. What a time. Um, and you had this incredible crew of people. Mm -hmm. I mean, you mm -hmm. that the was, ones that you that you itemized, yeah. Boy, and the Broncos, mm -hmm. and it was before the baseball hit and CU Buffs. Yeah, the thing that uh, was interesting though is that when I got there, the Bronco contract was uh, expiring. Going to bring that up at the end of that yeah. year. Uh, your contract either had already expired yeah. or was about yeah. to expire, yeah. um, and so things were not uh, were not well taken care of, and we were kind of a stepchild of Channel 4 at the time. Yeah. We we had whatever closets and empty offices they didn't use. It's true. Uh, was was kind of the, the makeup of what we had. When yeah. they became KCNC. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then Berg called them Kansas City's News Channel. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, I mean, we, we marked 38 years. We spoke 38 years ago, a couple of Saturdays ago, and his murder took place. And it's like, that was 38 years ago? Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's amazing. That was incredible. Mm -hmm. And um, 
that turned everything over on its nose too after that happened. Mm -hmm. And you you guided the ship through that. You, Lee Larson has steered not just KOA Radio, but that when that group becomes bigger and bigger and bigger. At one time, how many radio stations were you actually um, the head of? Well, um, I I ran the Denver cluster that that uh, you know had seven radio stations. But at one point, I also had responsibility for 11 western states, so there was a couple hundred radio stations in all these towns all throughout Montana, Wyoming, Utah, places like that. I remember you'd go on the road. Which is kind of fun. Yeah, we, you were be gone for a couple of days. Where's Lee? He'll be back. Yeah, I saw yeah. some beautiful parts of the state and the country. So uh, right now, I'm, I'm going to come back to sports broadcasting yeah. because we were talking about before we started to shoot, Cronky and Walton, this new powerhouse in Denver. And uh -huh. the Waltons have now bought the Broncos and Kroenke owns everything else. Uh, when it comes to broadcast rights, and I'm not asking you to divulge, but when KOA, KOA's had the rights to the Broncos for as long as I, as long as I remember. I think they've had them all uh, except maybe two years of the Broncos existence. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And we made a joke, you know, Russell Wilson, the football player that's going to save KOA radio. But <laughs> I mean, but it's, it's this is a huge money maker, isn't it? No, it's it's not a, a big money maker. Believe it or not, you would think it is. It's it's there's for a radio station, it's a lot of money. Yeah. But at the end of the day, you don't really make much profit off it, if any. But it's around it. But it, what it is is it's a draw yeah. to the uh, radio station, yeah. and especially uh, the last twenty years for uh, an AM radio station because uh, all of the listening has gone largely to the FM side where most of the music and all of that is. And so an AM station needs things to draw people into the uh, radio station to keep a position on the dial and on somebody's car radio to make sure that they still come over and check out the station every once in a while. So that's why uh, most AM stations and me, uh, when I was running KOA, you know, wanted to make sure we kept the Broncos, and when the, we, mm -hmm. we played a big role in trying to help get the Rockies to town because we knew that would be good for us, and so that's the other one. So that brings a lot and of people. And also the CU Buffs, right? And the CU Buffs, yeah. 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 But, um, and, but the, the big ones are the baseball and, uh, and the Broncos to bring a lot of people, a lot of listeners in during the course of the week. When I listen to people who know what they're talking about, you, it was what was surrounding it. Mm -hmm. It was what what let what let in what you could do with it, yeah. and it, you know, it it makes the station stand out. And when the Broncos had the Super Bowl years, well, wow, yeah, we had some great years. And yeah. and you know, if if you're a big fan of um, uh, the Broncos, then you you naturally want to listen to Dave Logan during the week <laughs> because he's with the team, yeah, knows well, the team. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. you you don't just listen to the Bronco game on Sunday. You might want to tune in and listen to Dave during the week, or now they've got Alfred Williams yeah. working with them and other former players. Um, and you would also have coaches shows and players shows yeah. and try to you know, extend the, the connection with the audience as best you could. And people made money. Um, um, yeah, I mean, the talent was, you yeah. mean, and well, so forth. Yeah. Well, they <laughs> yeah. So, no, I mean, seriously, I mean, yeah. had, you had to keep guys in the game. Oh yeah, All right. And yeah. You, you were one of the, I can say this, um, Lee had this spectacular office, and he had a button. <laughs> That's a true story. And he could, if you, they'd say, you know, Lee, want, boss wants to see you, oh man. And you would sit behind your desk, and you hit this button. I don't know where it was behind your desk. The door would close. And many of us who have worked and revere the man, you always get that oh. <laughs> like, Okay. And then the door would close, and then you'd have to do what you had to do. But the most wonderful thing about you is when the door opened up, you always said something good. And I've talked to Rosen and Logan and Rick and Mike and you know all the, yeah. all the and they said, you know, Lee never let you go until he said, oh, and by the way. And so when you went out, you didn't walk out with your hat in your hand, you know, you walked out going, well, okay, I screwed up. That was just a self-defense mechanism so you wouldn't hurt me on the <laughs> way out the door. Uh, that's all well, that was. I, I mean, I, I look at radio now, and you and I have had these conversations. We have these lunches, and this art form, perhaps I don't know what to describe it as, but this art form, this methodology, this this way of life, 
that we once lived. Uh -huh. What's happened? Well, my wife has a saying that she uses frequently with me, and it's things change. Yeah. And that's just it. You know, things change. Things morph, new. You know, the, wor the world keeps changing, so that's what happens, you know. But and, and when I first came to KOA, by the way, I used to, I'd go to the local broadcasters meetings and the guys would complain and, and, uh, about the state of radio at that time. They would talk about the, the lack of uh, proper English being used on the newscasts mm -hmm. and all that sort of stuff. And so, I, you know, I kind of always joked about, uh, you know, my first years at KOA, I had to fight off all the people that were annoyed that we no longer had a studio orchestra. You know, yeah. so you just think back and, you know, the radio, radio has changed through, that's the one constant. It's changed throughout its entire life and it's changed from, uh, you know, studio orchestras and live shows mm -hmm. that sort of were taken away by television. Absolutely. Uh, and then FM radio became yeah. bigger than AM radio and now you've got all the new technologies, satellite radio, mm -hmm. internet. Uh, and everybody has to evolve and change and find their place. There's uh, a, I've read that Detroit is now making cars that don't have AM radios in them. Mm -hmm. well, I've heard that as well. Yeah, what yeah. does that say? Well, AM radio has mm -hmm. a, a, a real battle on its mm -hmm. hands. I mean, there's, m you don't play music on AM radio no. unless it's a very, very niche kind of radio. Uh, a particular ethnic mm -hmm. kind of music or for a while even here in Denver we had um, KZW that played the music uh, big band yeah, sure. uh, music. Gene Amel back when Gene would, yeah. yeah. Be, but, but today you know nobody wants to put big band music on an FM station that's mm -hmm. too valuable a piece of property to, to put that on. Uh, so AM radio is, is kind of left with you know news, talk, sports, uh, and there's only room for so much of that. So there might be one or two viable AM stations in most, mm -hmm. uh, in most markets. And that's why the uh, radio manufacturers have got to make room for you to be able to plug in your uh, iPhone. They got to make room for you to be able to have an internet connection, satellite radio, and the AM is you know, a small audience. So they start to eliminate that in certain instances. Was the ability to own large amounts or many, many stations in a group, <coughs> excuse me, what, did that lead to the demise? I mean, we used to, I think we've said when we both were kids starting out, I would see the owner every day. Yeah. And then, you, then it got to the point, well, you saw the owner once a month. And the people who own Salem, and I've been here a decade, I met them once. Mm -hmm in 10 years. Mm -hmm. um, when you were a kid starting out in the business, I know that you were one of my highlights, you worked for Gene Autry. Mm -hmm. You saw Gene. Yeah, not often. Yeah, but yeah. it was Gene Autry too. Yeah, that's true. And, and wh when, did we, when did we get to the place where it was so big you didn't see the guys? Well, I don't know exactly when it was, but it was in the 90s, the, uh, the mid 90s when consolidation really began uh, in earnest uh, and it's essential to the survival of the industry because what happened to the radio business same thing happened uh, when you were you know you and I are old guys when we were growing up you might have a local um, they call it a five and yeah sure yeah. dime store now or something like that yeah. you know the yeah. local yeah. drug store yeah. and so forth was owned by um, the guy you saw. Yeah, yeah, somebody right there and the guy that was yeah. filling the prescriptions or making your, you know, malt for you was the guy that owned it. And uh, over time, those, you know, went away. Uh, same thing with uh, almost any business you can think of. That the, the whole idea of small business, uh, it, it's, it's challenging if you don't have something really unique. And in radio, uh, if you were in a city like Los Angeles, Denver, or New York, and you own one or two radio stations, you know, you don't have much to compete with when it comes to trying to generate revenue uh, or even uh, gather uh, enough audience together to be able to sell it to advertisers. So the, the, uh, with the pro proliferation of all of the other media and all of the places that people can go to watch and listen, if you didn't allow the radio stations to come together under <coughs> the umbrella of these bigger companies, I don't think 
radio would even be be today. Yeah. Someone once said, and I've always stolen it as a as a model. There's a dollar bill hanging from the ceiling, uh -huh. and there's sixty hands jumping to get the dollar. Mm -hmm. Which one jumps the highest? Yeah, yeah. gets the dollar. Mm -hmm. Do ratings mean that much anymore? Uh, ratings mean uh, a lot, especially in the uh, music arena, mm -hmm. because that's what differentiates one radio station from another. Uh, the world that uh, uh, of AM radio that we've talked about and that you worked in, what differentiates them is the personalities. And so an advertiser um, first and foremost wants results. Mm -hmm. And so if you're an advertiser buying across the country and you're buying through a big ad agency, you really have no way to evaluate things other than looking at ratings. Mm -hmm. It's how they buy television, it's how they essentially even by newspapers and magazines. But uh, local advertisers can can judge by the performance, the, the, performance, yeah. the, the number of yeah. feet that come into their store. Yeah. And so that's why you hear so many endorsement spots, um, you know, with personalities saying, go here, go there, right. uh, bec uh, because it actually works. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah Berg kind of knew that. I, and interesting on of the people that started selling live on the air was it was AB he right. he picked up stuff and there are other people were doing it but they were you're reading a script but he would he learned to freelance it and, and talk now, I'm, I'm sure he wasn't original but right. he picked it up but if we come back when in that time period and I know you and I've talked about it the new way that they gather ratings and it used to be Arbitron now Nielsen owns both television and radio right and they do a like a thing it's a like a little meter and they mm -hmm. you dock it and back thousands of years ago, we would people would write things in books, and they'd call you up on the telephone. How how has that affected anything as well? That well, it's had a, a, a couple of different effects. Um, and first of all, I'd like to say that um, the original form of advertising is still the most effective, word of mouth. Yeah, okay. Great. So if somebody tells you, "Hey, yeah. I know a good doctor. Yeah. Hey, I know a good this." You trust that more than anything you see, Absolutely. hear, read, or I got whatever a good deal else. on a car from. Yeah, and that's yeah. why that endorsement radio yeah. works, because yeah. if I'm a big Peter, ba uh, Peter Boyles fan, and you tell me, you know, hey, you know, this is a great guy over here, and he's going to take good care of you, then, then I, I believe that, yeah. and that's who I want to do business with. So as far as the ratings are concerned, the ratings um, have <clears throat> the biggest problem they have is who will agree to participate. Okay, so uh, when it came in the old days of writing it down, you had to make a commitment that you would keep a diary of your listening for several mm -hmm. weeks. Nowadays, you have to make co a commitment that you're going to carry uh, sort of like a pager type mm -hmm. device that you're going to put in your purse or wear on your belt, and it will take all the work out of it. It hears these subaudible tones and records. And, and records yeah how much time you were exposed to all of these subaudible tones. And so it's, uh, in one sense, probably more accurate than somebody r filling out a diary because lots of times what people would do would fill out the diary at the end of the week or yeah, something and kind of go, true. oh, I don't know. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, it's all what, true. what was yeah. I listening to? Now yeah, it's, yeah. you've got an electronic capture of what you listen to. Um, but as I said, the problem is who's going to agree to carry it? So if you try to talk to... Um, uh, you know, well-to-do people, um, uh, lawyers, doctors, whatever, and you say to them, hey, how would you like to carry this device for uh, a couple of years? And we'll give you a and dollar a day. And well, yeah, we've got this big prize <laughs> catalog, and you can pick <laughs> from it uh, anything that you want, depending upon, you know, how good you are at carrying the device. And so, forth. so you wind up, I think, surveying um, only a segment of the population, uh, and that's one of the reasons why I always felt that a lot of the um, young music-oriented stations did well because yeah. the young people were like, hey, this is cool. I can yeah. All I have to do is carry this around, and then I got this catalog that's got all these neat electronic gadgets that I can earn uh, and all of that. So, With XM and Cirrus in the market and on my truck, I have, that's, that's, that's why I listen to music. Uh -huh. Has that hurt the FM side of music in terms of, um, traditional radio? Uh, not very much. Um, I haven't 
you know, I've been gone, retired for a while, so I haven't seen any current statistics, but uh, it, it's just a small slice. Okay. And so the, the thing that radio has faced is everything's a small slice. Yeah. So um, a few people go to satellite radio, takes a little bit of time away from regular radio. Mm -hmm. People go to the listen on the internet, uh, on their yeah. computer, their iPhone, that takes a little bit of time uh, away from radio. Uh, radio still reaches like, you know, 96% yes, of the population yeah. every day. Yeah. Uh, it, the time that people spend with radio is shrinking a little bit because they've got so many other places, including satellite radio, to spend their time. You know, we, we look at um, what I can see of the Nielsen's for the 10 o'clock news in Denver. Mm -hmm. Really been diminished. Okay, have they, uh, yeah? Yeah, um, from back when it was Adele Arakawa and Ed Sardella, and you hear these enormous ratings numbers that they had at 10. Sure. And they're not there. Has that gone on to the internet? Has that gone on to social media? And then what are guys like you that had to overly, uh, and indeed predict what was going to happen next and then try and be ahead of it? Right. I mean, it's, 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 that's a big challenge, yeah. and that, that would be the challenge for the, one of the challenges for the TV stations. Uh, but I know exactly what you're talking right. about because right. I can come home uh, in the afternoon after yeah. playing golf or something and sit down with my wife and, uh, and I'll say, hey, did you hear that uh, such yeah. and such? And she goes, yeah. Yeah. You know, there's, I can't tell her anything. I, if I hear something on the radio driving home or, mm -hmm. or whatever, I can't tell her. She's already seen it, heard it. And, yeah. and I think that's the case with everybody. Yeah. So the 10 o'clock news used to be where you went to find out, well, yeah. what happened today right. in Denver? Yeah. Well, now you get any one of a number of different texts all day long telling you what's going on. So, you know, what has Lenin said, so what is to be done? Um, I, I'm watching the business and we're getting to do this. It's been really successful. And again, thanks to Mark Crowley and to the management guys. But people now, they can see this at 10 o'clock in the morning, they can see it at 10 o'clock at night. Mm -hmm. um, we've had great response to, you know, this this idea. And um, I watched this stuff and we, we would have what people used to call, uh, you, you had to be there to see All in the Family. You had to be there to see Mary Tyler Moore. Right. You have to do Not that anymore. anymore. Right. You, you had to be there, you know, for, for Allen Berg at mm -hmm. noon or one, depending on which, what year we're talking about. Right. You had to be there. Mm -hmm. Now you don't. Nope. There's very few things that you have to be there for yeah. because they can be preserved in so many ways and delivered in in so many ways and that's the expectation that the audience has is instead of me having to go to you when you decide to tell me something I it's now I want it when I want it where I want it how I want it uh, so that's a big change for I, our business I, we would have these philosophical conversations man's brilliant and I would say do we give them what they want or do we give them what we think they want or mm -hmm. and I you know you every once in a while you get lucky and hit a home run but that's a hard one as well isn't it oh absolutely and it's part of that continual mm -hmm. change that yeah. you have to deal with and mm -hmm. you try different things and and, uh, and try to innovate yeah what was the moment I mean when you were a kid did you know you wanted to be into business um, I did yeah, yeah I, I knew uh, when I was um, uh, in uh, high school that I wanted to do that and it was one of the things that I got involved with at high school was we had a, a state a radio station at the high school where, where we basically played a music and made school announcements yeah, sure. at the yeah. lunch hour and yeah. things like that and that was I wasn't a, a very good athlete so I had to look for other things yeah. to do and I, I didn't like French and Latin yeah. and <laughs> all that nonsense. So and I wanted to meet you know, women. And well, yeah, yeah. And well what's the simplest thing I can do and as so I got into radio. and First job you get paid to do? First job I got paid uh, was a little local FM station um, in a suburb of Los Angeles where I grew up. They, had, they were just starting out, kind of a low powered FM station, they were brand new, called the high school and said, hey, we'd like uh, somebody from the school to uh, come on once a week and, uh, and we'll ask them the score of the football game and the news from the school. So um, I got the opportunity to do that being part of this little radio station. So the, what was he called, maybe the activities director mm -hmm. at the school or something said, hey, Lee, do you want to do this? Here, you know, call mm -hmm. these people. Of course. So I called the radio station and they interviewed me a couple of different Fridays or mm -hmm. something and asked me those 
questions. And um, so then I said, um, well, would you mind if I came over sometime and just looked around, you know, type thing? And so I went over and looked around and met a couple of the guys that worked there. And one thing led to another, and they um, needed somebody to come in on the weekends. And the radio station used to come on the air like at sunrise and, yeah. and go Daytime off, or go so off the air. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 So they needed somebody to come in, turn the radio station on, and to <laughs> play some guy. music <laughs> and all that. And yeah. that was my first job. I yeah. got paid a dollar fifteen an hour, which was minimum wage yeah. at, in the early 60s. But when I listen to you tell the story and on my own stories and listen to other people, that you are truly, there's a, there are people I call radio guys. Uh-huh. And you certainly are a radio guy. Um, Alan Berg wasn't. Yeah, you know, he, he was a, an attorney guy. An attorney, yeah. disbarred attorney. Yeah. And <laughs> he walks in, sits down. Dave Logan was this wonderful ball player who Irv Brown brings in, puts him in front of a microphone, and he gets it. Right. Mike Rosen is my best example. Right. Mm -hmm. Michael yeah. sat down. He's going to do the shoot with us, I think, next week. Mike sat down, and he got it. Right. But you made your bones, as they say. You know, you were the, like this kid. And I, I, I sense that, that when you see it for the, when you see it or hear it for the first time, and you know it. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. And you weren't doing it because you needed the money. You need because you well, were, I needed the dollar fifteen an hour. Believe me. The point yeah. is, you know, yeah, yeah, you could have made it. Yeah, probably it doesn't matter, but you could have done it someplace else. But you chose. That was the one you wanted. Yeah, I, I, I got lucky with that little radio station, and then, you know, one thing led to another, and pretty yeah. soon I was working more hours, yeah. and I, that's how I put myself through college, yeah. was working at this little radio station. Uh, uh, several days a week. See, and that qualifies. I mean, they're, like I said, they're guys, and I know a handful of, of them that, and today I think one of the things that I'm, at least I'm critical of is, oh, you used to be this, so mm -hmm. now you can be a, this radio guy. Mm. You know, you used to be that guy, so now you can be this guy. Mm -hmm. And with the examples of the people that we, we spoke about, not many people do it. Yeah. Well, the, you know, the guys you mentioned, uh, they're, uh, very um, unique people. They're they're very uh, they're smart people. Very bright, they're yeah. very interesting people, yeah. and so they you know they stepped into the role of being on air yeah. uh, because of those kinds yeah. of characteristics oh, yeah. they have. I mean, Dave Logan is a, oh. just a brilliant yeah. guy, yeah. and he, he, you know, I can't remember. I played golf yesterday. I'm going to have trouble remembering what my <laughs> score was. Dave can remember the score of a basketball game. You know from. And when he was in college. That, yeah, they kind of uh, picked that up from Irv Brown, who was their mentor for all was, those yeah, guys. Yeah, for all those guys. And and Irv had that same ability. Yeah. And Mike Rosen is scary smart with, yes, you know, is. economics yes, and politics and yeah, all that sort yeah. of stuff. Uh, uh, so, yeah, they're just unique people. But when, when Limbaugh died, and I wrote a column that about being a radio guy, yeah. I remember he, he was Jeff Christie. He was... You know, he had been married a couple of times. He had been to rehab. You know, he, mm -hmm. he was one of us. He was a big personality. And if he'd been an insurance salesman, he would have been a big personality. <laughs> yes. Um, and yeah. he, um, you know, gravitated to, to show business or to the radio. Uh, uh, but he was a big personality. Didn't you tell me, and I apologize, that you had met him once and you thought he was shy? Well, in person, he yeah. was uh, relatively shy. Yeah. Uh, either that or he thought I was an idiot and didn't want to talk to me very much. I don't know. He was. He was. I don't no, think he, that. He, yeah. he was kind of, yeah. uh, you know, I was around him a number of times and uh, at corporate meetings and other things. And, uh, yeah, so he's he's a guy that, you know, you turn the mic switch on and Boom. and he lights up and, and uh, you turn it off and he's a little quieter. He's one of those guys that changes the face of radio. Absolutely. Wow. He's probably one of the most significant uh, people for AM radio uh, in the history of AM radio. I agree. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. you know, and Mike, I give credit, Mike will be here. Mike was doing conservative radio. Right. Mm -hmm. As I said, prior to that, we we're all leftists and liberals and stuff. And that's, I don't know if we were just came there, but when Rosen came along, uh -huh. but boy, the explosion was when Limbaugh hit and it was. Well, when you interview Rosen, ask him about mm -hmm. his experience uh, filling in for Rush, because it's kind of a, yeah. you know that story, yeah, and yeah, yeah. yeah. okay, because that, that's, that's yeah. kind of fun. You got to hit the spot, you know. Yeah, he, he, yeah. he filled in once. Yes. Sir. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't invited back. We've yeah. talked about that. Yeah, but, yeah. You know, and 
I don't know, as we kind of come to the end of this, and I don't want to, mm -hmm. you, what was the moment that for you, and everybody I think in the business kind of has a moment or says there's a couple of different times that I thought, wow. What was your wow? What do you mean? What you picked? Well, I, th I think it was the day that Peter Boyles walked in and quit. <laughs> And I said, wow. <laughs> you, you I, Yeah. Wh what just happened? Oh. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> that really. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. We're, we're, we've talked about this part of it a hundred different times. But some guy backed the truck up. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. You I went to the know. LIV tournament. Yeah. Yeah, yeah the guy yeah, backed yeah, the truck yeah. up and said, we'll give you this yeah. much if you want. And then, <laughs> well, and I said, wait a minute. And, and actually... Truth be known, the first morning, I thought, what have I done? Yeah. I mean, okay. I, there was a tremendous amount of money, and I was getting all this acclaim, but I wasn't at KOA. Yeah. Well, the good news is we're back together, yeah, and, and we I, worked I, together I, for a lot of years. And When I um, when I got to come back to KHLW Radio, actually, I came back, you brought me off the beach, and um, you and Christine, right. and gave me 760. We're doing really well in the morning, and then... I want Hal Moore to do this, and then and then you guys got K. Hal, and right. I had yeah. K. Hal for I don't know a whole 18 lot years, of years. Eighteen yeah. years. Yeah. You and I went through the Ramses together, went through all yeah. that stuff. But you know, your question about a wow moment—I yeah. I just got to tell you—I don't think of one. There were just so many, yeah. uh, and and so many people that yeah. I worked with, and I still think of all of those people from my years in Los Angeles or my years in Colorado. Uh, it just. They just never go away. It, it's it's a wonderful business, filled with a lot of unique, interesting, yeah. wonderful people, and I got to deal with I, all I, of that. I say that when people when we hear people grinding on it, yeah. you know, and I go, this business for my fan, what's done for me, oh, and yeah. all the people I've been able to meet, and the places you get to go, and the, you know the, this montage of people, collage of people that come in and out of your life in this business, you know. Wow. Well, we, we, you know, we, we tried other jobs early in our career, and we got lucky, uh, you know, getting into the radio business, and, you know, we could fake yeah. it for 50 years. That's the pretty late, good. The late Gus Marcus always said, if if it's work, because, you know, like yeah. Gus said, we, we're not going to work. Yeah. Uh -huh. You know, we're going to radio. <laughs> <laughs> and I think about my dad. One more story, and I don't know if you want to do I tell this about Lee. Lee's in the men's room and Gene Autry walked in. I thought that, <laughs> that was like that was my moment. I thought you can't get any better than that. But you're how old were you when when Gene? I, I was uh, probably I was in college, um, and I was uh, so I was probably 19 years old, and I had gotten this job. You know, I was working at that little FM station, but then I'd gotten this job at uh, a radio station in Los Angeles called KMPC sure. that was owned by uh, this company that Gene owned. And I, the, my job was the switchboard operator on the weekends. And it was a big radio station. It, it, it was at a very successful radio station in Los Angeles at that time. This is in the early 60s. And then, then the switchboard was like the one you see uh, Lily Tomlin <laughs> operate, <laughs> yeah. where she pulls up the cord and plugs it up here and then plugs it over here and things like that. So I, I would do that all um, Saturday and Sunday. Um, and so... Uh, growing up, it, it, when I did, Gene Autry, Roy Rogers, the Lone Ranger, those were my my heroes. And uh, so the first time that I met uh, Mr. Autry was on a Saturday. I was I had taken a break, run into the restroom, and uh, was standing at the urinal. And the door opened. Somebody came in, stood Gene. next to me, and I looked <laughs> over, Gene. and and it was Gene Autry. Yeah, yeah, and it was like, yeah. oh my gosh. You know, what is this? And uh, so. Tales out of school, um, Hopalong Cassidy, yeah. Gene Autry, and Roy. And this man. Um, Those are my guys. Oh, yeah. S Snuff Garrett did a song called Hoppy Gene and Me. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that's Lee Larson. Yeah, there's a. Yeah. My heroes will always be cowboys. Grew up. Uh, grew yeah. up yeah. I have a big yeah. painting with yeah. the whole pictures of all these old cowboys. Yeah. I'll say this and I don't want to. You were that guy for me. Uh, Believe me, I mean the best brother. No, no, you were the you were that guy, and and Snuff Garrett, who I later met and talked to, his mom's working in the defense plants in the Second World War, and his father's gone, and his mother would put him in the movies, 
and go to work. Mm -hmm. And he watched Gene and Roy, and he sure. wrote a song about how they how they raised him and mm -hmm. taught him. Yeah. This man did it for me. See you the next time. We'll get Rosen in here. Take care of yourselves, you guys. I'll see you next time here on The Shoot. <sighs>